All right, well, let's turn to portfolio positioning then, or the conundrum of portfolio construction, as our next guest says, trying to be positioned for the economic recovery as COVID-19 cases continue to surge in the US and Europe, and a vaccine looks, well, to be at least nine months away. To give us his thoughts, Marcus Bogdan from Blackmore Capital joins us live via Skype in Melbourne. Marcus, pleasure to have you on the program. Thanks for joining us. The conundrum of portfolio construction, you know, it, it's a tough one. Where do you stand on it right now? Sure, it is. And it's something we're wrestling with at the moment and, and how you th thread that needle, needle where you've got two, two worlds. You've got the current world that we're in. We're in, um, you know, essentially coming out of lockdown in, in, Austra in Australia. So we're looking at evidence-based companies that are still doing well in this en environment. You know, consumer staples, on, online telecom telecommunications. Um, but then we've also, and markets are forward looking, we're also looking to the future. There is confidence around a vaccine, uh, but that will be nine to 12 months away. And you can see that there's, um, there's speed humps in there where there's pauses in, in, in trials and, and what have you. But the economic data so far has been better than anticipated, both at a macro level and certainly in the last uh, earnings result, re result season. So we, are, we have got an eye on looking at companies that are going to benefit uh, from that, that normality in economic activity as well. So it's that du duality, and that's what we're, we're, we're wrestling with at the moment. Marcus, if you're taking, <coughs> excuse me, the longer term view, should you be worried about those uh, shorter term issues and well, risks, certainly as far as the US election is concerned, for instance? Well, I think the, the the market is really looking through through the politics. Uh, they're looking at the eco economic data, and they're also seeing that risk assets are emboldened by um, monetary and fiscal fiscal policy. And those support me support measures look like they're going to be there for the short and and medium term. And so I think that they will they're very supportive of risk assets go, going forward. Nonetheless, I mean, there's still a range of different risks that we've got we've got to, to navigate. But that those issues, um, yes, they're 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 real. But uh, for the moment, anyway, uh, markets are looking through those. So when you look at some of the key expansion recovery sort of companies or stocks that you look at, I know you've you've mentioned some of the sectors. Financials is one. Media is another. Can can you just give us some colour around media? Sure. Um, and I think you've got um, the benefits of subscription businesses uh, and you're seeing that in News Corporation. You're seeing in, in, in Nine's business um, um, with, with Stan and what have you. Uh, and then I think you'll get a more traditional economic recovery where you'll see advertising rates improve as, as well. And so um, we think both of those comp companies look attractive uh, and and they're sort of the sum of the parts valuations looks like they're still trading at, at a significant discount. And what about healthcare? Now obviously you've got some major companies working or contributing to the development of a vaccine but it, it, that itself comes with risks doesn't it because there's no guarantee that they will actually develop an effective vaccine. Sure. Um, I do think the data and the number of participants are uh, uh, in the pipeline in terms of delivering delivering a va vaccine is particularly encu encouraging. But as you rightly say, it's not guaranteed, and we certainly don't know the exact the exact time timeline there. But healthcare is 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 a broad is a broad sector, uh, and so you're seeing the Australian pathology companies, uh, Sonic and Helios, doing particularly well with COVID testing. Um, you're seeing companies like. Ramsey now starting to see elective surgery lists coming back in Australia as as, as well, um, and then companies like CSL, which have been impacted by COVID in terms of the collection of pl plasma globally, are potential recovery plays. So you're seeing companies that are benefiting currently at the moment, particularly pathology companies, and then on the uh, on the other side of that, you see the recovery companies such as Ramsey and, and CSL, which will benefit from a normalisation of activity. Just to cap it off, can I ask you about logistics more broadly? Things like Goodman Group, Cube, you know, even Charter Hall to an extent, ones that are really getting exposure to the sort of logistics, warehousing side of things. 
has the trade already been done? I mean, how do you you got to look at valuation, right? Because a lot of these a lot of these are well known um, sort of themes, I guess, or tailwinds sure. from COVID. How do you sort of select whether or not to get into them, or when to get into them? Yeah, um, look, I think for 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 Goodman Group, I think structurally they are absolutely benefiting from the move to to logistically logistic warehousing, and I think that thematic has a number of years to play out and they're the leading group in in that and so I think there's still um, attractive um, development profits uh, for that for that company to to obtain um, we also like the fact that the balance sheet is particularly strong with gearing around 10 10 percent so that theme is well well known but I still think um, that there is room for that company to continue to grow, and it will be rewarded when you're getting, um, you know, earnings per share growth of 10% plus uh, over the four forecast period. Cube is slightly different. It is far more economically sensitive to imports and and, and, and exports, uh, but they do have particularly attractive sovereign assets, hard assets, particularly more, more bank. And I think that there's uh, this is a monetization benefit in that group as well. So Cube is more around the assets and the recovery play. And we certainly don't think that that is fully reflected in the share price today. Marcus, terrific to get your views this morning. Thanks very much for joining us. Marcus Bogdan from Blackmore Capital. Pleasure. Thank you.